Large language models are trained in huge amounts of data. And even though they're excellent tools, they come with one big problem. They can't easily keep up with the information and this generates answers that are sometimes limited or outdated. And sometimes they might even make things up. So you might think, why don't I just fine tune the model on some more data to fit whatever my use case is. But the thing is, fine tuning a large language model requires a massive computational power and it's just impractical for most use cases. Let's take an application like S News, for example, where you can literally talk to a chatbot about worldwide news happening right now. That wouldn't be possible if you had to fine tune a model to do this because you would have to fine tune it every five minutes and it would be crazy expensive. For this, we use something called Retrieval Augmented Generation, aka RAG. In a RAG system, the LLM receives all necessary information it needs from a vector database that uses similarity search to find the most relevant information in the database to answer your question. So to provide the system with new information, you would only need to add or index that information to the database. This indexing process organizes the data so that it's more easily searchable by the vector database. Have you ever tried finding a person in a massive crowd photo? This is a similar process. Imagine dividing this crowd in smaller groups, first by hair color, then by eye color, then by clothing style, etc., etc. Each layer gets you closer to who you're looking for. Vector Databases uses a similar multi-layered approach to organize vectors based on their likeness. This way, finding a similar image becomes a quick hop between similar groups rather than trying to go over one by one. This is how the Hierarchical Navigable Small World Index works, or HNSW. It creates multiple connectors between data points, making searches more quick and efficient. Indexing your data to the vector database is your first step of your RAG system. So let's see how this process actually looks like. First, we use a loader to gather all the documents we need. These documents could be anything from articles, books, web pages, social media posts, you name it. Then a splitter breaks these documents into smaller, more manageable chunks, typically sentences or paragraphs. If the chunks are too large, they might miss specific details, but if they're too small, then they might lose context. So finding the perfect balance is key to improving your retrieval quality. Next, each chunk is processed by an embedding machine that turns the text into numerical vectors that capture the meaning of the data. Finally, these vectors are stored into the vector database, organized by the HNSW index, and ready for retrieval whenever you need it. We can use the same pre-processing and embedding techniques for the user query or question. Once the relevant information is retrieved, it is combined with the user's query. The LLM then uses this combined data to craft a augmented answer, which is a more accurate and higher quality response for that query. You might have heard of the new large language models that have huge context windows and can read a lot of text at once. So if we have those types of LLMs now, does that mean we don't need RAG anymore? Well, not quite. Even though they have a larger context window, they're still limited to the training data that they were initially trained on. The RAG system can read from an entire database, and it's not limited to just what's in the nearby text. Not to mention those large context windows are very expensive and slow to process. Quadrant is the most fast and efficient vector database, especially if you're handling loads of hundreds of millions or even billions of vectors. And if you want to get started building your first RAG application, go ahead and check out some of the other videos in the channel showing step-by-step -step how you can do your own RAG chatbot in the most fast and efficient way using Quadrant.